Authority, responsibility, integrity. These are all traits of a leader, a leader that people respect. The leader among baseball teams is naturally the manager. The difference between a good manager and a bad manager could be the difference between a strong playoff bound team and a weak losing team. A good manager knows how to lead a team. He or she knows the ins and outs of running a ball club, how to improve the players from a fundamental side, and honing one's skills. They'll also be someone that gets along with the players. A manager that loses trust and respect from his players has failed as a manager. Lastly, I think we can all agree that a leader needs to be truthful. He or she cannot lie. This means being honest about the team, performance, and especially oneself. That last point should be fairly obvious. Nobody wants the leader of a team to be a liar and dishonest, especially using dishonesty to gain notoriety and responsibilities. You don't want your manager to lie his way into the role. Normally, we don't see that happen in Major League Baseball, except for one notable exception. In 1998, the Blue Jays hired a first-time manager who had one of the weirdest and downright disrespectful tenures a manager ever had in MLB history. Before we talk about the manager, we need to see how he got to his position and the Blue Jays leading up to 1998. The Toronto Blue Jays won their first World Series in franchise history in 1992 and promptly won their second World Series just a season later in 1993. Unfortunately, the team fell to difficult times immediately after that 93 season. Toronto had four consecutive losing seasons from 1994 to 1997. In response to their recent losing, the Blue Jays fired longtime manager Cito Gaston, the same man who won those two championships with the team. Ahead of the 1998 season, Toronto hired Tim Johnson to be their new manager. Johnson was a former MLB player who played for the Blue Jays in the 70s. After a short career, he spent almost 20 years as a coach or manager in the minor leagues before being hired by Toronto. Most notably, he was the bench coach for the Red Sox in the mid-90s. As a coach in Boston, Johnson became popular among the players due to his war stories. Johnson was a Vietnam veteran and would tell stories of his experiences overseas. Red Sox outfielder Mike Greenwell commented on this, saying the stories would fire the players up, and from all accounts, the players admired Johnson and what he had to say. Why do I mention all of this? Because it shows Johnson had a good relationship with his players. He used his stories and experiences to have success on the field and gain respect from his team. Specifically, he would tell his players about the struggles he experienced and showed how he survived the war and toughened it out. This inspired players on the Red Sox and made them look up to Johnson. When Johnson was hired as manager, he had a tall order to fill as 1997 was a very disappointing season for Toronto. Prior to the 97 season, the Blue Jays had signed free agent star Roger Clemens to a multi-year deal to pair him with the previous season's Cy Young winner, Pat Henkin. The club also traded for All-Stars Carlos Garcia and Orlando Merced and looked to build themselves into a contender again. They finished under 500, continuing the team's free fall from stardom just four years prior. How did Johnson perform as a manager? Initially, not great. He struggled at the beginning and the Blue Jays hovered around 500 for the first half of the season. Entering the All-Star break, Toronto was 46-42, but a disastrous July saw them drop below 500, reaching a record of 56-59 in early August. Despite a successful career as a coach and minor league manager, Johnson struggled to transform that into success at the major league level. Johnson reportedly had a bad relationship with the pitching coach Mel Queen, which may have created a hostile environment in the clubhouse, contributing to the bad chemistry among the team. This was odd as Johnson usually had a great relationship with his fellow coaches, and we'll get back to this. It appeared the Blue Jays were going to end the season under 500 for the fifth consecutive year, conferring to mediocrity. However, despite the quarrel and losing, Johnson was able to right the ship and his Vietnam stories are one of the reasons for it. One notable example involves pitcher Pat Henkin. When the Blue Jays were traveling to Boston to face the Red Sox, Johnson went to motivate his pitcher and he did so by telling him a war story. The story he told him was how he killed two children in Vietnam because they were in the way of fire. He told him this story to get him to accept a change in the pitching rotation to show that sometimes you need to go through tough times in life. Yes, Johnson actually did tell him that story. 
In the past, Johnson told milder stories about the war, but in recent years, he had begun to tell more deeper and more gruesome tales. Whether it was the cause of Johnson's Vietnam stories or not, the Blue Jays suddenly caught fire. With a 56-59 record on August 7th, Toronto went on a tear and one month later on September 7th, they were 78-66. That's a 22-7 record for those keeping track. They went from 9 games out of the wild card to 5 games, but unfortunately, they couldn't catch up to the Red Sox. Despite finishing the season 88 and 74, the Blue Jays were eliminated from the playoffs and finished 4 games back of the wild card. Despite the anticlimactic finish, the Blue Jays and their fans had much to look forward to. It was their first winning record in 5 years and Toronto looked poised to improve in 1999. They had rising stars in Carlos Delgado and Sean Green, as well as a young pitching prospect by the name of Roy Halladay. Not to mention, Tim Johnson won 88 games in his first season ever as a manager. After that 56-59 start, Toronto went 32-15. Maybe Johnson just needed to work out the first year kinks, and that latter record showed what he was more capable of. Who knows what could happen now that he has experience under his belt. It appeared the Jays were on the rise with success just beyond the horizon, until everything crashed at once. As mentioned several times, a big reason why Tim Johnson was able to connect to his players and earn their respect and admiration were through his war stories. His stories portrayed him as a brave, heroic, and stoic man. Except, that was all made up. All of his stories were lies. Johnson's lies first arose because of Roger Clemens. For Johnson's birthday, Clemens wanted to buy him a motorcycle helmet with his military unit engraved on it. When Clemens asked Johnson's wife for the information, she was confused as Johnson never fought in the war. For years, Johnson was lying about his experiences in the Marine Corps and his wife didn't even know about it. This is partly why he and pitching coach Mel Queen had a public feud. Queen cut on to Johnson's dishonesty. With much speculation and confusion regarding Johnson's military experience, he came clean after the season ended. The truth is, while Johnson was a member of the Marine Corps, he never fought in Vietnam. He trained other soldiers while at camp, but was excused from combat to play minor league baseball. You see, at the time, minor league baseball players were excused from combat as long as they reported to camp during the offseason and weekends. Johnson admitted he always felt guilty about that, seeing his friends all get shipped off while he did not. In one case, during his rookie season, he phoned a friend he made while at camp, only for the person on the other line to tell him that his friend died in Vietnam. Johnson certainly had psychological issues regarding his experience in the Marine Corps, and his lies were a direct result of that. After he came clean, he reportedly went into therapy and personally phoned several people he knew in Major League Baseball to apologize. Despite this large controversial issue, the Blue Jays stuck by Johnson and wanted him to come back as manager for 1999. This was not taken well by everyone. Notably, Toronto third baseman Ed Sprague called Johnson a liar and a backstabber. During spring training of 1999, with tensions high between Johnson and the club, the general manager made the decision to fire Johnson and he hasn't returned to Major League Baseball in any capacity since. Tim Johnson will go down as having the strangest and possibly even most disrespected managerial tenures in the history of Major League Baseball. He lied his way to get into the position, to gain respect from his players, and lost everything because of it.